Good afternoon, church. I hope you're doing well. I'd like to take a few minutes to share together as we, we prepare to enter this, this season, uh, this week known as Holy Week. It starts this coming Sunday with Palm Sunday. Uh, and it is a week that is full of highs and lows and, and highs yet again. It's all kinds of emotions wrapped up into an amazing week of God sharing his love with us uh, through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this morning, I, I have with me a, a, a pelican that was given to me by friends in my one of my former churches. And you might, some of you might say, why do you have a pelican sitting beside you on Holy Week? Uh, well, you may or may not realize this is actually a Christian symbol. Uh, from about the 12th century, it was noted that the pelican was particularly attentive to her young and, and how she cared for them. Even to the point of it, when no food was uh, was available, the pelican is known to have uh, kind of pecked at its own breast to provide uh, uh, nourishment or sustenance for her young as they uh, they drank the blood itself. They're they're actually becoming a, a symbol of the the Eucharist, uh, Holy Communion, and our Lord's sacrifice and passion for us. Uh, as we think about that, it uh, it's. Uh, it's an amazing image for this week, and we're going to discover that message shared throughout the week. In so many ways, I'm asking us, we're, we're being called as a church to celebrate Holy Week in an unprecedented time. Uh, we're used to things like uh, tragedies happening in our world, whether it's 9-11 or, or the hurricane of the, of the season. Put the, the name on the hurricane that most uh, impacted or uh, caused you to remember a, a particular time. Maybe it's a localized fire or you name it. All kinds of things have happened. But when those events happen, usually they happen to a region, even to a great region. The rest of the world is able to, uh, to pitch in and be a part of this. But what is so different about this season is this is happening to all of us. You can't run far enough around the globe to get away from it. We're all in this together. And we cannot wait for the time when we're allowed to, to venture back out, to, to go back to work. When was the last time you said, man, I'm so excited to get back to work? When was the last time you heard your kids say, I, I cannot wait to go back to school? And it was late in the school year. Uh, yes, there is something unprecedented about these times. But what is also unprecedented is the way that we have been called to celebrate what God is doing at Holy Week in a time of social distancing. You know, for more than 50 years, I, I, I've had kind of a, an experience that I expected to re, be repeated uh, throughout Holy Week that had a lot of similarities to the year before. Maybe it was the large, large crowds that showed up for worship. Maybe it was the music that was bigger and bolder and grander than we ever expected. You know, last year we had over 50 musicians on our stage uh, as a part of the Easter celebration. That's uh, that's five times as many people as I'm allowed to have in the building now as we prepare for worship. Maybe it's the flowers and, and the, the bright and vibrant images that are a part of the Easter celebration, uh, the hugs and the fellowship that come as we greet one another, the embrace that comes as we, uh, we share our love with our friends and our family. In the time of social distancing, all these things are changing. All of these things uh, will be unprecedented this year. The thing that hasn't changed is the fact that this is the holiest week of the year. This week will speak yet again the amazing message of God's love for us. Uh, and in order to allow that to happen, I'm going to challenge you to do several things this, this coming week. Maybe you need to create a sacred space in your, in your home, in your apartment, in your place where you live. Uh, kind of an altar, if you will, to, to focus your attention and to focus your heart as we we meet our God through prayers, through services of worship, through, uh, through small group meetings that, uh, where we gather with our brothers and sisters online. I'm going to challenge you to participate in a myriad of things that your church staff uh, are, are putting together to help you know God's love in a powerful way. When we come together for, pray, for prayer, let us, let us bend our knee. Let us humble ourselves before our God and hear him speaking to our hearts. When we come to sing, let us sing with as much gusto as we can offer uh, so that our, our, our voices will join in the choruses that proclaim God's goodness to the world. Uh, participate in the activities that are there. 
They're all designed to help us make this journey one step, one day at a time as we head towards the cross of Good Friday and ultimately the empty tomb uh, of, of Easter morn. Uh, let us find times to sit in the silence and allow God to speak to our hearts. Uh, let us discover the longing for God that is, is how God has created us. Uh, to be in communion with him, let us lament the things in our lives that have taken us away from our God and kept us from, uh, from fully sharing our love with him. In all of these things, perhaps the most unprecedented thing that we need to grab a hold of this week is the hope that our God offers to us. Hope for resurrection. Perhaps we will understand that in a way we haven't in years past because we know what it means to be separated from those that we love so greatly love so dearly in this time. Friends, I promise you, we will get through this together. We will discover God walking with us every step of the way. And yes, we will come back together yet again, not only in a virtual sharing, but also in a, uh, in a grand and joyful physical gathering as the church yet again. Those days are still ahead of us. So friends, as we, uh, as we enter this week, uh, let us listen to the leading of God as we we journey into the future that he is preparing for us for. I'd like to pray for us as we close our time. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, gracious and mighty God, thank you for these, my friends, for this chance to, to meet you in this place and to know that you are calling us to a, a greater understanding of who you are and your amazing love for us. As we enter this holiest of weeks, bless us with an understanding of what you long to do in our lives. Call us to, to share the love that you've offered to us through Jesus with our friends, our families, and our neighbors in whatever way we can do it in this time. May we celebrate a holy week as we head towards the, the holiest and greatest celebration in the life of your church. Heavenly Father, these things we ask, we beg. We pray this day in the strong and powerful name of Jesus, who is our Lord, our Savior, and our Christ. Amen and amen. Friends, y'all have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.